when this camera was announced at NAB six months ago, I just couldn't help thinking this is too good to be true. Like, this is a perfect product. I'm really excited to finally get my hands on it and see how uh, the camera behaves in the real world and if it's as good as they promised. So let's get started. There it is. Here it is. It's pretty lightweight. It's been a week now since this unboxing. I've been using the camera a lot. Here are nine things that I really love about this camera. Number one, low light. The original Pocket was known to behave very badly in poorly lit environment, which was quite disappointing because other brands such as Sony or Panasonic had cameras in the same price range um, that were much better at dealing with low light situations. Now trust me, this is definitely over because the new Blackmagic Pocket uh, sensitivity in low light has improved a lot. It has what we call a dual ISO, which means that instead of having a single ideal ISO setting of 400, it has a second uh, ideal ISO setting of 3200, um, which basically means that um, the noise level resets itself when you cross ISO value 1250. Uh, which gives you a very clear and noise-free image starting from value 1250. Overall, it's really clear that Blackmagic has worked very hard on this point because um, I find its low light uh, performance much, much better than the previous generation and actually almost even better than the Eurosa Mini Pro. Number two, autofocus. The new autofocus is surprisingly accurate. I own uh, several Blackmagic cameras and like many owners, I did not expect a big breakthrough in that area because um, the autofocus function on Blackmagic cameras has always been behind many other competitors. But this time they've really worked very hard on this feature because it's much better than uh, any other cameras they ever made. I really like the reactivity and the precision of uh, this new tap to focus feature. It's not as good as the A7S or the GH5 autofocus, but definitely much better than any other BM camera. And I personally use it almost all the time. Number three, connections. Loads of changes there. Um, almost every connector has changed. So as you can see, we have a jack input for microphone, jack output for headphones, um, full size HDMI for video monitoring, which is much better than micro HDMI. We have an XLR input for a lav or a boom mic, and this new uh, USB type C connector with which you can do three things. You can update the firmware, you can charge the camera. Yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> or record to an external SSD. There is no LAN C port, so you cannot start and stop the recording with a wired remote. Um, they've implemented the Bluetooth chip inside. So since you can control pretty much any settings using this protocol, 
um, you can use either an iPhone or iPad or Android app to control the camera. So the only hiccup I found are these rubber cache. I just hope uh, I won't be losing them too soon and that they are solidly attached to the camera. Number four, audio. Even if you have a sound guy taking care of the audio, there are many situations where you want to have some decent in-camera audio, which was absolutely not the case with the previous pocket camera. Um, the sound was really bad. This is just the sound test of the original pocket's microphone. You are hearing the sound of the pocket 4K's internal microphones. This is a whole new world since uh, we have now much, 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 much better in-camera microphones. The sound is very good and we also have very good preamps as well. Blackmagic has done a very good job improving the audio of the camera and not just the microphone, also the preamps. It's also very easy to assign which channels should get which source uh, within the menus. You are hearing the sound of the Pocket 4K's internal microphones. Now you are hearing the sound of the Rode NTG3 wired into the XLR inputs of the Pocket 4K. Now you are hearing the sound of a Rode NTG3 wired into a Zoom H6. Number 5. Design. It definitely will not fit into your pocket. Uh, but when you look at what all the camera has to offer, uh, you know, it's fine really. Um, I really like the black design. It sits very nicely next to the other black magic cameras. Even with a heavy lens, um, it doesn't feel too heavy when shooting a handheld. And I've managed to shoot a lot of scenes with my Glidecam plus a Sigma 1835 and its speed booster without too much pain. And when it comes to water resistance, so Blackmagic hasn't given any IP ratings, but I thought I would just do a small test um, to see how the Blackmagic Pocket 4K behaves in water. Uh, just kidding, I won't be doing this because I only have one and I'm so lucky to actually have one in my hand. Number six, the touchscreen. I really love the five inch touchscreen. It's bright, it's beautiful, it's very precise. I think it's definitely one of the things that sets the camera light years away from competition because this screen has definitely been designed for video and not stills. Um, you can adjust many settings directly and go through the menus easily. The interface is very, very intuitive. Um, and easy to use. Bear in mind that you cannot rotate uh, the screen. This is not a flip out screen. But since there is no flip out screen, um, this button is pretty useless. And uh, for engineering reason, they probably left the screen this way, which is a good thing because I'd rather have a sturdy fixed screen than a wobbly uh, fragile flip out screen. Number seven, battery and media. So when it comes to battery life, I must say uh, it has improved, but not that much. Um, in practice, I've managed to run um, for a maximum of 40 minutes or something on a single LPE6 battery. Also, um, I found that the battery percentage indicator isn't always very reliable, especially with Blackmagic batteries. Um, it's a bit more reliable with Canon batteries. 
The good thing though is that they've used LPA6 uh, batteries which are used in many DSLRs and are much, much easier to find than the previous generation batteries. It's worth noting that Blackmagic has released a cable pack which allows you to plug in uh, a V-mount battery through DTAP power or even make your own uh, battery grip. You can record an NSD card or on a more expensive but faster CFast card and this is a very good choice uh, Blackmagic. There's just this thing that you cannot record on the two cards at the same time and you cannot record on an SSD and on a card at the same time as well. Number nine, image quality. I must say I'm very glad to find the usual amazing image quality that we're used to with Blackmagic. I was extremely pleased to see that this new pocket lived up to my expectations. The footage is extremely clean, the colors are gorgeous and very easily matched with the Ursa Mini Pro. You can shoot 4K at 60 FPS and Full HD up to 120 FPS in a window mode, which opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Of course, many competitors offer these shooting modes, but they tend to put a very crappy bitrate and compression. Here, the quality of the slow-mo shots are really, really good. I didn't see any more or aliasing, and the picture definitely looks even better than the Pocket, uh, the original Pocket camera. Or I think we definitely have a big breakthrough here, and the camera is going to be a huge success in the indie world. I expect plenty of beautiful short movies and videos shot with this wonderful camera. Um, I think it's not really ideal for vloggers, um, mainly because of the screen, which is not a flip out screen. I have not been paid by Blackmagic. I have paid my camera in full like every other customer. And I must say, I do not regret purchasing this camera. I really, really, really love it. Um, it will follow me every single day. So that's it. I hope you liked the review. Um, I'm going to do an extensive side-by-side -side comparison with the Osa Mini Pro shortly, as well as many other videos. Thanks for watching and see you soon.